Hello and welcome, this is Reddit Oscar. In this video, we're going to be talking about the Flame of Frenzy, again. In the last video that I made regarding the Flame of Frenzy, I made the case that the Flame of Frenzy represented a kind of existential despair. That being possessed by the Flame of Frenzy was coming to the conclusion that life was not worth living. That to live is to suffer. And that whatever joy and beauty life might hold, the cost for that joy and beauty was much too high. And so becoming the Lord of Frenzy is to embody the desire and the willingness to end all of life. Now, because of the nature of that video, I had to cut out a lot of the evidence supporting that conclusion. And it also didn't give me an opportunity to talk about some of the more mundane aspects of the normal lore. And so that's what I'm going to talk about today. To begin with, supporting my reading of what the Flame of Frenzy is supposed to be, is the fact that pretty much all Flame of Frenzy related item descriptions talk about its association with pain, its association with despair. Vike's War Spear describes him to have been tormented from within. Some of the Frenzy incantations are titled as unendurable and inescapable. It's also reinforced by the Shabriri's Woe talisman, since woe means sorrow, suffering, or distress. And the talisman itself talks about how Shabriri's eyes were gouged out. There's also the fact that all of the people infected with the Flame of Frenzy are bent backwards in a pose that seems to want to express extreme suffering. And even the three fingers themselves look to me like they're in agony. They wriggle and contort in a way that seems to imply they're in pain. I think that's made more clear by the fact that when they approach to embrace you, they're trembling and you can hear the crackling of their flesh burning as they approach you. As they grip you gently, they scar you, they burn you. That is to say, they inflict you with pain. Finally, there's the nomadic merchants. Their armor set reads, These merchants once thrived as the Great Caravan, but after being accused of heretical beliefs, their entire clan was rounded up and buried alive far underground. Then they chanted a curse of despair and summoned the Flame of Frenzy. In other words, it is suffering that summons the Flame of Frenzy and causes people to become possessed. Finally, there's the most convincing piece of evidence that I mentioned in my last video, which is Hayata's reasoning for why it all needs to be burned away. All that there is came from the one great. Then came fractures and births and souls. But the greater will made a mistake, torment. Despair, affliction, every sin, every curse, every one born of the mistake. Those who gave me grace howled without words, saying they wished they were never born. Become their lord, take their torment, despair, their affliction, every sin, every curse, and melt it all away as the lord of chaos. No more fractures. No more birth. Hayata calls life a mistake, and cites specifically the torment of the people who wish they were never born, as the justification to burn it all away, as a means to ensure that there are no more births. Births here are put on the same level as torment, affliction, sin, and curses, highlighting that life itself is suffering, that life is what divides and distinguishes, and that it must be burned away. Okay, that's the end of all the evidence that supports my reading. I really should have put it together with the last video, but I couldn't figure out a way to weave it in naturally. A lot of people uh, complained that I didn't weave it back into talking about Elden Ring, and I probably should have, but it felt weird trying to bring it back into Elden Ring after talking about such a heavy subject. I felt it was better to just let it linger, and for you to think about the associations that I had already previously mentioned yourself. But anyway, now let's talk about some of the cool in-game lore associated with the Flame of Frenzy. First, let's do the obvious one, Vike the Dragon Spear. Vike is the NPC that invades you at the Church of Inhibition, and he's also the boss at the Lord Contenders Everjail. He was a tarnished of the Round Table Hold, and according to his armor description, no one was closer than he to becoming Elden Lord. Vike's Dragon Bolt incantation tells us that Vike was the knight that Lenseix loved the most. 
Lenseix was a dragon. She was sister to Fortisax, and she took human form to commune with the knights as a priestess of the dragon cult. Now, despite Vike being a Gigachad closest to the throne of Elden Lord, his armor tells us that he traveled far below the capital and was scorched by the Flame of Frenzy. The armor then asks, did he make his choice for his maiden, or did some other force lure him with suggestion? It seems likely that Vike had made it to the mountaintop of the giants and was on the way to the kiln, where he met Shabriri, and Shabriri probably gave Vike the same sales pitch he did us. Chosen, tarnished, and would-be lord, descend into the depths far below the Erdtree capital, seek audience with the Three Fingers and the Flame of Frenzy. If you inherit the Flame of Frenzy, your flesh will serve as kindling, and the girl can be spared, setting you on the righteous path of lordship. In an attempt to walk the righteous path of lordship, Vike traveled to the Frenzied Flame Prescription, and there he embraced the Three Fingers. However, for whatever reason, Vike was found unworthy of becoming the Lord of Frenzy. This is revealed to us by a ghost that is in front of the Church of Inhibition where Vike invades us. Ironically, Vike's actions actually didn't spare his maiden, as in the Church of Inhibition, we find what is probably his dead maiden. What makes it likely is that the body has the Finger Maiden set, and protecting her body in the church is likely why Vike invades us in the first place. Okay, now I want to talk about the Nomadic Merchants and the Great Caravan. In a Reddit post titled Cut Content I Found in the Text Files, NPCs, and Quests, it is revealed that the Merchant Kale used to have a much larger quest line. I am pretty sure everything in this Reddit post is accurate, because since it was posted, other things that he posted were shown off. For example, this post talks about an NPC that can make alcohol for you out of dreams, and since then, YouTuber Lance McDonald made a video showcasing that dialogue and that questline. More importantly, the Kale questline that was cut shows Kale looking for his ancestors, looking for the Great Caravan. Through your assistance, he eventually finds it underneath the subterranean shunning grounds, and the following is the dialogue he has to say after seeing all of the merchants that were locked away underneath. Ah, you, is it? Did you see what they did to my ancestors? The whole clan, buried alive, sick, maddened, husks of themselves. Have you heard their moans? They're hardly human anymore. They think we worship the Three Fingers? That we called the maddening sickness down upon them? Well, if that's what they expect from us, then that's what they shall get from us. The world of grace and its people should have been content to see us sink between the cracks, but to have intruded upon our solace, having broken us upon their whims. I'll never forgive any of you. Okay, this content was removed, but I don't think there's anything here that's inconsistent with what we already know about the game and about Kale and his nomadic tribe. What's interesting about this dialogue is that Kale doesn't seem to believe that his tribe was guilty. His dialogue suggests that the reason they were locked down here in the first place was because they were suspected of consorting with the Flame of Frenzy, with the Three Fingers. Kala's dialogue suggests that that's not true, and in fact the in-game Nomadic Merchant armor tells you that it wasn't until after they were buried underground and they chanted a Curse of Despair, and that despair is what summoned the Flame of Frenzy. So it seems the Nomadic Merchants were innocent originally, they were slandered. Shabriri's howl describes him as the most reviled man in history, and the Shabriri woes talisman tells you that his eyes were removed as a punishment for slander. With all of this combined, it is my working assumption that it was Shabriri that slandered the great caravan. He was the one that instigated their persecution. That is just speculation, but it seems to track with what we know. Finally, there's one more interesting thing about Shabriri and the Lord of Chaos ending. Shabriri is definitely special. The Shabriri Howl incantation tells us that he is rumored to be the place where the Flame of Frenzy sickness began. He seems to have the power to possess dead bodies, because he possesses the body of Bloody Finger Hunter Yura after he dies. Shabriri claims that Yura gave him his flesh. When killed, Shabriri assures you that he is Chaos Incarnate, and he cannot die. 
Alright, so here's my speculation on what's going on during the Flame of Frenzy ending. When you approach Marika's body, you collapse onto the ground. You are still for a few moments, and then when you get back up, you are the Lord of Chaos. Your entire head is replaced with a frenzied flame. And you seem to be looking around in joy at the Flame of Frenzy consuming everything. The way that your character is moving and walking around expresses delight. And your character has never moved that way in any other cutscene. So what I think is happening is that in this cutscene you're already dead. You die when you approach Marika and you collapse to the floor initially. And the person moving about is Shabriri, having possessed your body. The reason I think that is that Shabriri is a liar. Not only is he known for slander in the item descriptions, he lies to you in the game. The justification he uses for you going down to the Flame of Frenzy prescription is as a means for saving Melina. He masks his words with honey, telling you to take the path of true rigor, the path of true and honest lordship. To burn your own flesh and spare the girl. It all sounds very appealing. But it's a deception, because once you meet with the maddening Three Fingers, you are locked into the Flame of Frenzy ending. All the other endings give you a choice. Even if you unlock all of them, you can unlock Ronnie's ending, you can unlock Fia's ending, you can unlock the Dung Eater's ending and Gold Mask's ending. You can unlock all the other ones, but you get to choose which one you use. But not so for the Flame of Frenzy ending. You don't get a choice because you're not there anymore, because you die as you approach Marika's body. That's the reason that Shabriri lies to you. He doesn't need to be honest with you and convince you that he's right. You just need to be tricked into going along with it, which is probably the same thing that happened to Vike. Once you're tricked into it, he doesn't need you anymore. You don't have any choices. It doesn't matter to Shabriri whether you understand the motivations of the Flame of Chaos or not. As far as he knows, you have no means of avoiding it, and the only means of avoiding that ending is an obscure, unalloyed golden needle that allows you to resist the influence of outer gods, which is not an easy thing to get. Together, all of these facts suggest to me that you are already dead as the Lord of Chaos, even before the rest of the world. All right, finally, there's one more interesting lore topic that I want to cover. The popular assumption in the community is that the Flame of Frenzy is an outer god, a separate outer god different from the Greater Will. And I don't agree with that assessment. I think that the Flame of Frenzy and the Three Fingers are an aspect of the Greater Will in a very different way than the other outer gods. First, let's take a listen again to Hayata's dialogue. All that there is came from the one great. Then came fractures and births and souls, but the greater will made a mistake. Torment, despair, affliction, every sin, every curse, every one born of the mistake. And so, what was borrowed must be returned, melted all away with the yellow chaos flame, until all is one again. The Flame of Frenzy is not like the other Outer Gods. It is something heavily associated with the Greater Will. It is born of the Greater Will's mistake, of the fractures and births and souls. It's something that is within the Greater Will's purview. Then there's the fact of the Three Fingers. The Three Fingers themselves are the symbol of the Flame of Frenzy. And like I said before, they look like they're writhing in burning pain. The reason that some people suggested that the Flame of Frenzy was its own outer god, was the fact that the Three Fingers were there, and that similarly to the Two Fingers, the Three Fingers could be the source of communion with the Flame of Frenzy. But I don't think that's what's being suggested. None of the other outer gods, as far as we know, have fingers associated to them. The God of Rot doesn't have fingers associated to it. The Mother of Truth doesn't have fingers associated to it. As far as we know, the Greater Will is the only one to have fingers associated to it. And it has multiple two fingers. And it's important to note that the people of Leyendil know about the three fingers. They know that he's down there. He's not just down there by accident. The Shunning Grounds is where they put all the things they find undesirable. And at the very bottom is the three fingers. 
suggesting that he was probably the very first thing that was sealed away. The three fingers is probably at least as old as all the other two fingers. It's the reason that when the merchants were thought to worship the three fingers, they were all buried underground in the same place where the three fingers was. I think that the three fingers are actually just malformed two fingers. They are two fingers that was born of the Greater Will's mistake. And like the normal two fingers, they're in communion with the Greater Will, except that it's channeling a different aspect of the Greater Will's will. Haida talks about how everything used to be one thing. All there was was the one great. The one great she's talking about is probably the Crucible. The aspects of the Crucible incantation describe the Crucible as the primordial Crucible, where all life was once blended together. The definition of the word Crucible is a container in which metals or other substances may be melted or subjected to very high temperatures. It is also a severe trial or ordeal in which different elements interact, leading to the creation of something new. In my view, both of these descriptions are appropriate. I believe that the Crucible is the situation where all the things were in a primordial state and all was one, but that it was also an ordeal, and through this severe ordeal, life took shape. There were fractures and births and souls. The Law of Regression Incantation states, The fundamentalists describe the Golden Order through the powers of regression and causality. Regression is the pull of meaning, that all things yearn eternally to converge. This is the aspect of the greater will that the Three Fingers is channeling. It is the law of regression. It is the pull to eternally converge. It wants us to return what was borrowed and melt it all away until all is one again. Okay, I think that's the end of this video. Please let me know in the comments if you think I've gotten something wrong or if I've missed the mark somehow. Until next time, thank you very much for watching.